Now, next uh, effects on bladder. So bladder can be, it can have neurogenic bladder. You can have urinary tract infections. If the folies is lying down for a long time, you can have these infections. You can have the stones. So what we aim in rehabilitation is to uh, make the patient sit as early as possible. And if the attendants are also willing, uh, a patient is a cervical patient. So what we'll advise you is go for CIC, clean intermittent catheterization. It need not be sterile, but it should be clean intermittent catheterization. So what, what we do in that, if the patient hands are functioning, so that means like patient is a paraplegic patient, incomplete injury, then in those cases, we train the patient to uh, use his own hands to put the police catheter inside using a clean technique wherein he uses a container, uh, wherein he has to place it, he has to use soap to wash it. So in these cases, there will be bacteria, no, no doubt about that. But unless the bacteria causes an infection, see, the bacteria staying inside the bladder will, is called colonization. But once the bacteria starts causing symptoms like fever, that is called infection, and that is when you need to treat it. Asymptomatic bacteriuria need not be treated. This has been proven times and beyond in all the guidelines, all the researches. So asymptomatic bacteria, I have seen many uh, you know, physicians and other people who are, not, uh, who are not in the rehabilitation process. They are treating the asymptomatic bacteria. It should not be treated. So when you call asymptomatic bacteria, it is called asymptomatic bacteriuria when you have the colony forming units more than 10 to the power 5, right? So asymptomatic bacteria should not be, bacteria should not be treated. So what are the signs and symptoms? You might find the episodes of incontinence, painful urination. The patient might complete, uh, you, when you examine, you find there's increased paucity. So one of the causes of increased paucity may be, may be UTI. It might also lead to neuropathic pain, add-on associated with neuropathic pain. Then it can precipitate autonomic dysreflexia. We have discussed now before. Then obviously it's an infection. So you have fever, you have malaise and lethargy. So what are the methods of uh, bladder emptying? Uh, it can be intermittent catheterization, as I told you just now, or it can be indwelling catheterization. It can be you know uh, long-term police catheter, or it can be a suprapubic cystostomy, which is even better if you have. If you, there is no other option and the patient is a quadriplegic patient with the caregiver not willing, or uh, you know you, you can think that you can buy some time with the uh, uh, the catheter part, then go for suprapubic cystostomy rather than police. Police is good for 21 days. More than that, you think that the prolonged catheterization is required or home-based uh, rehabilitation we are doing, then send the patient with suprapubic cystostomy. That is better. Okay. Now, what what uh, does it do? If you use these methods of bladder emptying, what what it does, you know, it uh, prevents the bladder over distension. It prevents the reflux, the high pressure voiding, large uh, post voiding. It prevents all these things. Otherwise, these things will occur. The outlet obstruction might occur, you know, faulty uh, and uh, unsterile technique is like even worse. So to prevent this, these are the better things. This, this methods are better. Also, the patient is asked to maintain a bladder diary. Now, this is another important aspect of uh, the rehabilitation where we engage the patient to carry out his activity. And um, means like he is also taking part in the rehabilitation process. He's not a passive person. His role is also very important, the patient. So the patient... Uh, Every time the bladder diary is, uh, every time he does the micturation, that is he urinates, he should mention the time. What was the drink? That is pay padarth is like something, one second. Okay, so pay padarth, this one, is something like what he has drunk, right? How much, kya, and kitna. Means how much and uh, how much ml. Which type and what what, what, what was he drinking? Kitni bar peshabo is like how many times he micturated. Then how much it is? It is is it very little, little or too much? Okay. Then suddenly, if he had some micturation, then that uh, we note down that also. Ki how much? Then every time he micturates, did he have the urge of urination? Yes or no? Okay. And what was he doing at the time? Was he having any leisure activities? He was watching a TV. He was talking to someone. So all these are necessary. So we can plan out things. Like he might be socially embarrassed. No? He is talking to someone and suddenly he micturated. So if we, we can note out these things, so we can uh, plan accordingly that what water intake we have to plan input so that the output remains controlled. Okay, and this also helps in, uh, you know, planning out the CIC, clean intermittent catheterization, that frequency of that, right? Okay. 
so suppose a patient is there who is uh, able to pass urine but is not able to completely empty the bladder so what to do in such cases the patient is able to pass urine but still the bladder is not completely uh, empty so if in cases of spontaneous voiding but suspicion of incomplete emptying symptoms of incontinence frequent voiding of urine utis distended abdomen autonomic dysreflexia this should be noted out then note the volume charts okay if the, at least three times three three days of volume charts if the total uh, volume is okay remove this marking okay yeah so if the total voided volume is more than 2 uh, liters that is increased so just note down if any new onset diabetes is there or if the features of diabetes insipidus are setting in or the patient is going for a renal failure or is it because of drugs or he is drinking too much of water because we have found patients that who are drinking lots of water so if you take a input lot of input and your kidney is fine then obviously it will come out in output also so you can control that part if the urine output is decreased then find out whether the chart is proper or there is an insufficient fluid intake okay next is uh, if the the volumes are very large so, so, so say more than 500 ml then ensure more frequent emptying to avoid bladder filling more than 500 ml so if the patient is you know he is maturating spontaneously right so ask the patient to frequently empty so that the bladder does not fill more than 500 ml and if necessary do catheterization by self inter clean intermittent catheterization and uh, uh, if the, there are small frequent volume volumes like uh, 300 ml more than 300 ml exclude any uh, infections uti consider the detrusor sphincter dsd detrusor sphincter dysynergia or other outflow obstructions example prostate hypertrophy urethral stricture and bladder stones if the residual volume is you know more than 50 to 100 ml and the uh, this can be this residual volume can be shown only on the post maturation ultrasound so post maturation go for the ultrasound and note the volume how much volume is remaining in the bladder so once you do that go for ultra also do an ultrasound of the upper tracts to include uh, to exclude the dilatation of the renal tubules or to identify the stones etc right and clear the upper tracts for to clear the upper tracts you know refer to a urologist urologist and for the dilated upper tracts again urgent referral to a urologist and place an indural catheter indwelling catheter by spc or foley's catheter while you are uh, referring the patient to urology department and then specialist uh, investigations like urodynamic study has has to be done to assess the pressures within the bladder like and other investigations like transsectal ultrasound and urethrogram depending on the